Welcome to the Renviad interviews. Today we are speaking with Marcus Hainish, the director of Q Ghostly Remote Effect. How are you doing, Marcus? I'm good. Thank you. So Marcus has produced and directed a fantastic short science fiction film, uh, Q Ghostly Remote Effect, um, with one of the central characters being the actual environment where it, it it's filmed uh, in Iceland. Um, so we thought it'd be really interesting to get Marcus on the show and just dig into the film, uh, the influences behind it and what it took to produce and direct such a complex short film. Um, so can you introduce the film a little bit and explain where the idea came from? What was the core kind of theme behind making this short film and what led you to focus on something that's actually quite complicated to do for a shoot which not only is the film abroad outside of you know where you live getting the equipment there getting the actors etc the crew but also a quite a hostile environment which is iceland okay a lot of questions um Maybe I start with uh, where the idea came from. Um, I'm um, based in Berlin and I'm uh, currently uh, still studying at the German Film and Television Academy. I'm studying directing. And this film was my um, individual film, which you usually start in third or fourth year. So, um, and back in that days, I was very hooked with um, human robot relationships um, and had this idea of a scientist building a robot uh, and, and learning from it. And at the end, turning out the, the scientist uh, was more uh, evolving than the robot. Um, and then uh, Ex Machina came out. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, seeing my idea. Damn. Um, Fantastic film. Yeah, I love it. And um, back in that days, um, I had the idea we are going to shoot this film in the woods around Berlin, in Brandenburg. And in Germany, we have this rule that if the temperature rises above a certain level, you are not allowed to go into the woods anymore, which happened to us um, mm. for, for the shooting. So all our uh, uh, perfectly planned uh, uh, schedules and, and locations and everything uh, was not available anymore and we had to cancel the shoot and um, the producer uh, at this time was my girlfriend and she broke up with me uh, no. after, after cancelling the shooting so I was like uh, oh no a bunch of broken glass in front of me yeah and uh, I went to uh, I, I needed to get a clear head and I just uh, spin the, the world uh, globe and went to Iceland um, just by accident because uh, okay. somewhere and uh, went off hiking uh, and um, after several days uh, of, of grieving and walking through the landscape I suddenly found myself uh, location scouting uh, for mm -hmm. this film because I had a feeling Ooh, okay if I can't do it in, uh, in the woods in Brandenburg um, this is even better it's, yes. uh, it's looking so much more alien-like and uh, unhuman in a way, uh, kind of supported uh, my idea of this scientist and robot taking off into a very uh, unknown landscape. Um, I would have had to work hard to achieve this in, in Brandenburg to, to find spots where you don't see any human um, influences um, so this is where the idea came from and um, then it was quite a, a journey to convince our university to, um, yeah, to <laughs> let us go there because uh, in, in this early uh, period of, of studies um, they want you to to be as close to the university as possible or uh, to, yeah. to school in germany at least yeah but um, we could um, uh, convince them that this is a, a huge advantage uh, for the film in, in, in terms of narration because this landscape, as you just uh, said, is really um, like a third character. 
uh, and it's uh, supporting the story and the emotional journey of the protagonist um, because she starts quite um, quite robotish in a way at the, yes. at the very beginning and um, finds some kind of humanity through this journey. So my sensation or uh, understanding of the that character, the scientific character, is that I think and this is just my interpretation. I feel that she and again it's the landscape as a as a sort of central character. Um, I think she starts to realize not only her own humanity, but her vulnerability caused by the landscape that she is very prone to the changes in the environment. However, the Android is not. And then she starts to realize that there is a disconnect between her as a human being and the synthetic. Uh, and in the end, without you know, giving the movie away, the synthetic plays a very pivotal role in the humanity side of uh, the scientist. That's what I got out of it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, very, very, um, uh, thanks for the reflection. Um, I mean, the end is quite open. Um, yeah. In a way, it's not so specific what happens. Some people told me they think um, the robot died. Uh, other ones told me they, they merged. Um, several interpretations are possible. For me, it was always kind of um, the, the robot or the synthetic um, becomes a part of her. Um, so when they fall in love... Uh, yeah, they, that, that is very interesting. At the end, she, she's away, but also she's a part of her. So it's mm. like this... Quantum mechanics, uh, uh, like the title also uh, refers to yeah, yeah, yeah. quantum mechanics. Um, so ah. both, uh, she's a part of her and she's gone. Yes. So it's so like you, you, you split up uh, with, with your girlfriend or uh, a loved one uh, passed yeah. away. Um, it will always be a part of you. That's but right. It changed you, it influenced you, so it's not really gone. Ah, that's, that's, that's very interesting. So I was going to ask about the title because it's such a, a an out there title, you know? And um, now that you've just mentioned the word quantum mechanics, I can see where the cue's coming from. Can you explain the title a little bit to us, please? Yeah, it was, uh, well, when... Um dealing with uh, sci-fi movies and robots. I, I was thinking of how the robot should work. Is it just a mechanic uh, a motor thing or is it like an evolved uh, uh, AI? And yeah, actually, uh, when you look at the world, um, we are developing uh, a quantum mechanic uh, yes. driven uh, computers and AI. So probably we will get there at some point and I wanted to, to go there too and have okay. a, even better in a way than, mm -hmm. than a human or have more potential than a human. Um, so the title is referring to what Einstein said uh, when talking about quantum mechanics. Uh, he, he said, um, if there are two particles, uh, and no matter how far away they are, they are still linked to each other uh, and connected. So if mm -hmm. you influence one uh, particle, you also indirectly uh, influence the other particle. And I saw a similarity or an analogy uh, to this robot and uh, uh, scientist. And uh, also in a relationship. Exactly. If even during and after you're not together anymore there is a, an influence that's been yeah started. and also because uh, you uh, <laughs> the human and the robot how how far can you be away from each other than being uh, being divided by technology or by your body and how everything works so it's uh, also a connection of this uh, antipodes in a way <laughs> so you have been studying film and um, you are still, I still am. you still are, yeah it's it's a lifelong uh, graduation uh, project right now say that again sorry 
I, I'm still studying and I'm currently working on my graduation uh, project, uh, which will okay. be my first feature film. Excellent, excellent. Is it going to be in the science fiction genre or something else? Yeah, I have two projects and we will see which, uh, which gets funded first. Uh, uh, one is quite a, a small uh, love story and the other one is a near future sci-fi thriller uh, taking place in a devastated world. Um, cool. I have recently myself uh, been revisiting Altered Carbon season one after four years of not seeing it, and it's spectacular. The ideas visually behind that film are just, well, series actually. It still stands on its own, and uh, it's, it's interesting to revisit titles that you've not watched for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us some of the either series or films that have influenced you not, not only towards making Q Ghostly Remote Effect, but um, your previous films before that, which are Love Note, uh, which is very different, uh, almost an animation, but it's not. <laughs> um, can you talk to us about some influences that you've had that have had a strong Kind of connection with um, and and possibly things that aren't films you know outside of that other interests um, that have influenced your your filmmaking Ooh, um well I, I i watch a lot of uh films um one the one film i uh watched the most in my whole life and i i get back to it uh, again and again is uh, Waking Life from Richard Linklater, which wow. uh, is completely different uh, um, uh, way of filmmaking, or it's kind of an essay film with animation techniques, yeah, uh, dreamlike <clears throat> uh, feeling, um, and it's it's talking to me uh, uh, every time in a different way. Uh, it's uh, it's amazing. It's never the same. Um, so sometimes I watch uh, old films which are from my childhood, and I can't can't watch it can't watch them anymore because they didn't age uh, uh -huh. with me or with the with the world. But this film somehow does, and uh, it's like it's growing with me. So it's a big influence. So I really love Linklater films, and um, for Q, for example. Uh, Jasper, my cameraman, and uh, I watched a lot of Terence Malik because okay. a challenge or what I try to achieve with a film or like an experiment, I wanted to try to start in a very sci-fi uh, uh, beginning. Uh, and as you can tell, the, the lab is yeah. standard. Um, so it raises all the questions that usually sci-fi films uh, rise. And I wanted to transform this and uh, evolve into something that is not asking questions anymore. That's not. I wanted to to um, to leave this uh, sci-fi genre and transform it into something else, something that is more sensible, like like also the the scientist does on her journey, discover that there are things she can't describe with words okay. so also i try to to transform this film into something that is more tactile or sensible or more correlated to emotions or feelings or uh, an experience yeah human it definitely has a a, a a a strong sense of humanity at the end and at the beginning the film is is kind of a by the number sci-fi um you know experimentation film um we we mentioned uh, recently a previous film that you'd made called love note which was made before q and um it's a beautiful short film very romantic and uh, very quirky as well um was this one of your first titles made at college or was it something done outside of college 
No, it was kind of part of uh, college, um, but not not really. There was this um, Ministry of Foreign uh, Affairs or Foreign Cultures, I don't know the uh, English title, and they um, send a mail to uh, all film schools in the German-speaking uh, countries. And um, the goal was to make a pitch for a five-minute uh, short based on uh, statistics they did. They asked like several thousand Germans about uh, how they think the future will be or should be and how, it's, how they perceive it right now. And all you got was um, like diagrams and, and numbers and you had to figure out your, your own uh, point of interest. And what I found in one statistic was the younger the Germans are, uh, the more important it is for them to have real human interaction, not digital, mm -hmm. but real. Yes. And this is interesting because uh, um, my prejudices were the other way around. So, um, yeah, I made this uh, little pitch. And uh, at the end, uh, I think 20 uh, projects got uh, a funding of 15,000 euro. Uh, with the goal to make a five-minute short uh, that's working without language. So okay. they can uh, send it all over the world without uh, doing translations. Yes. So this is where the film came from and was in collaboration with my film university. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, if, <clears throat> if it would be good to find out more about the cast of both films and um, how you approach them for Q, Ghostly Remote Effect, uh, first, and Love Not second. Well, um, for you in the beginning for Q, it was, it was a male scientist uh, with a female robot um, when, we, when we thought of shooting it in Brandenburg. But in Iceland, it somehow felt um, different, and at the mm. end, uh, I also found it more interesting that it's not about gender, because the story is not about gender. It's about, it's about love that's uh, it's, um, uh, getting over the gap, or you know, like human and robot, and not yeah. the yeah. main fantasy of a, of a sex robot or something. I didn't want to go there. Um, so I um, I was looking for a, a female lead and. I didn't do a casting for for the female lead. I found Effie and I, I knew it. And I talked to her on the phone and um, found out she's she's the one. Okay. So starting from there, we then had a quite large casting for the robot girl together with Effie. So um, okay. always try the combination. And for the other three uh, characters in the lab, I knew some of them and the others I, I do the small casting, yeah. And um, for Love Note, um, I know Bardo. I shot with him <laughs> some music videos and stuff. And um, and Lisa, I found um, also via short casting. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, <clears throat> within within both films, there's an incredibly strong use of uh, practical visuals so the clothing the costumes the set designs um the color palette uh and then obviously visual effects so you used to uh emphasize these these visual scenes can you tell us a little bit about the costumes that were created for q um the design of these is is quite unique and uh very, very professional as well. It looks like things you might get off the rack in 50 years time. Well, maybe I do a costume design line out of that. Well, um, I really uh, love to do practical effects because uh, I know post-production and how difficult it can be. And I also like the, the feeling of practical effects. Um, and um, it's hard to do uh, really well visual effects without budget. So yeah. also a decision I, I made budget-wise um, to, to go as 
uh, to use as much uh, practical uh, stuff as possible. And for Love Note, for example, it was also uh, correlated to the, the core theme to have real human contact and um, not fake contact. So the story is about um, uh, turning away from, from the digital towards the analog. She's building this love node. So the goal was to only use practical effects, not have a single visual artificial effect there. So yes. the love node is, is practical and real. Um, we even built a little flying drone, which didn't make it through the edit. <laughs> oh, OK, OK. Um, the, the love note does, um, I've, I've studied a lot of music videos, and it does strike me as a music video without singing, etc. Uh, I don't know if that's because the male character is some kind of musician or something. I'm not sure. No, I think Bardo is no, I, I, I mean, he's an actor and he probably has a music training, but he's not okay. a musician. And he played as an actor in music videos I shot. Um, Ah, I see. Uh, and also for Q, just to, to continue the uh, the answer, uh, we, when I remember it correctly, we don't have a single visual effect. Everything we see there is is practical. Okay, so, that's, that's uh, interesting. Which is interesting because we won a, an award for best uh, VFX. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the the we're light get an award for that, uh, although there's no no visual effects used. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's very interesting. I was trying to work out if the light that is emanating at the back of the uh, clothing that strobes up and down was an actual LED somehow, or if it was a post production thing. No, no, it's complete. It's it's real. We had this uh, um, LED strip built under the closing and I, I know this programmer who's uh, uh, the boss of a robot football team uh, wow. and he's into technics and the, he built this uh, LED stripe where you can uh, tune the uh, brightness and the speed of the, the light drop. Yeah. So, so could always um, adjust it to the, the outer light levels. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So. The, the film has picked up a lot of awards and um, it's it's had it's gained a lot of attention. Uh, we're lucky enough at Rendiard to be one of the distributors of your title. It's performing well on, on YouTube as well as other platforms, uh, as well as Love Note. And um, can you tell us a bit more about what reaction the film has gained in the sci-fi sci community at various festivals or just you know, other interviews you may have given or just reactions from fans? Yeah, I think it's, it's now, it has traveled the whole world, um, being screened on more than 160 festivals and won more than 60 prizes. So um, unexpectedly kind of yeah. huge attention. I'm so happy about that. It's really and good. A lot of interviews um, and it's kind of, a, how do you say polarizing? I don't know. Um, there is the one side that really hates it in a way because it's rising those questions in the beginning and not answering it at the end. So okay. people are disappointed of this change of genre in a way, or not, um, yeah, not giving what they expect um, in the in the beginning or when they. Uh, when they go to a, a hard sci-fi festival. Yeah. And uh, the other part uh, is very open and they they love this experience and they are mesmerized in a way they can't tell why, but they're sitting in cinema for 20 minutes and are overwhelmed by the landscape and the sound and the rain and the acting. And uh, and at the end, it's completely... I've, I've sit, I've, uh, I've sit in uh, screenings and people are just quite after the film and which is amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, Have you yeah. had a chance to, to talk to the audience at any of these festivals? A bit, yes, a bit. Um, so beneath all the technical questions, um, I had some some private chat. Um, so people came uh, to me after the screening and we were talking about uh, personal relationships. Mm -hmm. So somehow this, I mean, the story triggers it, but uh, also the film kind of triggers talking about 
relationships you had that kind of broke in a way or yeah. are still working I mean, I had several uh, different chats but um this yeah, waking up and be still being part of uh, one's life is, is a theme that uh, pops up in, uh, it's humanity it's the thing that never changes <laughs> we were all connected by the same emotions uh regardless of where we are and then of oh. course um because i made the decision to go for a female lead um mm. yes, uh, and against this uh gender normative uh, uh thing i also have nice feedback from the queer community mm -hmm. so has been screening that some yeah. queer festivals um that's and, good um, yeah yeah and I, I i guess um again i can't give too much away because i'd like people to watch the film but uh yeah that it, that's handled really sensitively and and very tact tactfully um to the point that you don't really realize until your brain kind of goes over what you've just seen and you're like oh i've never seen that before and it's in a sci-fi movie <laughs> so that, that that was really good um can you give our viewers um, a bit of your own kind of views on how to make, not to make it, but just to remain determined to get your projects created, produced, filmed, uh, distributed? Um, what's your experience so far of, a, you know, your not career, but just experience as a filmmaker. Is there any um, advice that you would like to share with anybody? Hmm. Well, the advice I would give myself, um, <laughs> uh, my, my, my younger self, <laughs> um, don't waste too much time in doing uh, projects from others, although it's, it's necessary to, to help each other, but I started um, uh, when I was starting doing film. I did a lot of uh, production jobs, uh, unit management, working on set, not really being close to the creative process, but being on film sets and learning how this huge uh, film body is moving and um, mm -hmm. what takes how much time, um, which helped me a lot to understand every department. Um, so it was a, was an important uh, lesson for me, but at a certain point I should have jumped up off earlier and focusing on my own projects. Uh, yet I uh, spent some more years in doing other projects, being first AD for feature films and stuff like that. Okay. So before I um, uh, finally uh, got into film school, uh, I tried it uh, once and was uh, neglected. Um, and then I had to wait for some years because I was only allowed to apply twice. Okay. The second application made it. So, yeah. So my okay. advice would be focus on what, what you really want to do. And, uh, listen to your inner voice because it's always uh, a lot of people having ideas and not every idea is, uh, is good for the project yeah that's it that's great thank you very much well that was that was a really really insightful interview and uh i know that our our viewers and listeners are going to get a lot out of it thank you for your time and um like i said before <clears throat> we'll post the link to uh q ghostly remote effect in the description below uh this interview Thank you for your time, Marcus. And Thank you for the opportunity and the really nice questions and for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you'd like to submit your film to Rendiad for distribution, please go to our website at www.renderyard.com, click the Submit Film tab, enter your film details, and we will review your film and get back to you.